Oh, here we are. We're back again. <laughs> okay. So, um, here we are. Um, so here's the thing. The thing is, is when you align yourself with the perpetrator, thinking that they have more power than you when you went through that abuse, you give that power behind the abuser more power when you want to recreate in order to empower yourself again. This happens all the time. Now, with um, the number one problem that we see that really instills fear, loss of uh, soul, all kinds of things are our children that get molested, children that get hurt. Um, it, it really hits them on a very deep soul level because what is soul? Soul is your innate energy. That is why they feel they have lost something on a very deep level. There's a reason for that. And so in, and they see the perpetrator as the powerful one. So then if they don't understand a higher level of goodness of God or of, you know, purpose of love, of peace, of joy, of all kinds of things, they see the perpetrator as the powerful one. And they go, well, what I'm going to do is get myself into that place of being the perpetrator so I can feel like I'm empowered. There's many different ways that the, that children or young adults or anyone who goes through these different things does this. Um, what I've noticed with women, if they've been molested or they've been raped, what they want, and I know this is tough stuff, but I'm just talking real tonight so that we can actually have a good world. That's all. That's all. They, it's weird, they'll, they will turn around and they will sexualize themselves hardcore thinking that they are empowering themselves by them having the stance on it. But is that the true empowerment? I have to question, is that? Because quite frankly, in my personal opinion, and what I see maintains people's youth, their joy, their livelihood, um, their looks, <laughs> their good habits, is that even when something like that happens to them, they don't let their joy or their faith or their innocence go away because of someone that does something bad. They're not going to put themselves in risky situations that have already been feeding off of destroying you in the first place. You're not going to get empowered by going into that realm and making a few dollars um, by being a sexual object in that situation. You're not. So that's one example. Um, another example is sometimes people uh, go through uh, angry situations. Maybe a parent was very angry. Uh, maybe um, an adult in their life was a very angry person and it seemed like being angry was powerful. Um, no, it's not. Actually, when someone is losing their cool and they lose their head, they're completely out of control. They're not in control. There's no power there. But because you feel fear, um, because someone's gotten angry, you think, well, maybe I should become angry. Maybe I should be even tougher. And um, you'll see a lot of young men who could be very kind and very loving um, because of certain situations that they're put in when they're kids or young adults in tough situations and they see the young people um, who are kind getting hurt they think they've got to be real tough they got to be mean they've got to um, be uh, pessimistic they've got to beef up they got to be the tough one on the block but again you've honed in that energy that was destroying the person that um, you saw was the enemy in the first place, you're only beefing up that innate energy. It's not healing anything. I don't mean to get on a soapbox, 
But the thing is, is that I've been seeing so much of this, so much of this, that like up close and personal for a long time. And people ask me all the time, you know, why don't you age? Why, why are you healthy? <laughs> why, you know, do you go through certain things and it doesn't seem to phase you? And um, I just, I, I just feel like maybe I should share some some things of what, where my head's at um, that keeps me going in all kinds of different things. So um, what's important for me is when you see someone who's hurting or who's angry or who's gone through a lot of different trauma um, and you want to be their friend and you want to help, Lifting people up, we always have two choices. We can either judge and hate on people or dismiss them, or we can, um, and we can criticize. We can um, look at their surface looks. I mean, a lot of people that look rough, it's because they've been through a lot. And those are the people that really need lifted up whether it's a word, whether it's something that you can do to help them, um, or whether it's just being yourself in your centeredness of trying to be peaceful and trying to be kind, um, that you might be able to inspire them. And I really believe that by doing that, you can really change uh, lots of different things. Um, and we need that now because if you've noticed, there's been, what, three generations of extremely traumatized people <laughs> going through all kinds of things. There's a reason why the drug trade is so high. Why do people take drugs? I've never taken drugs. It scares me. Um, I, will, I hardly even take an aspirin because I see what happens when people um, get involved in that on an extreme level. So, um, but why do people do that? Because they've felt pain and they want to get away from it. Um, and the easiest way to get away from it is to take a drug, right? But the thing is, is the drug does not stop the source of what's going on. And it doesn't allow you that accountability to say, hey, you know what? I can choose for myself what I want to do with my energy post whatever thing I went through. And I can hone in with hopefully uh, people that are around me that can inspire me of what love is. Because here's the thing too. There are people in the world that um, were taught that hate is love. Everything's the opposite. So they have a really hard time understanding um, what really love or what really kindness is. They don't even believe it. And it's funny because in my world, um, sometimes I'll meet some people and they'll say, you're too optimistic. Really? Um, because there's such pessimism in the world. Um, but I, I really do try to believe in other people. Even, even if they've gone through a bunch of stuff, I, I believe in them, you know, to a point <laughs> until it, it gets to the point where they, you realize that you might be in a dangerous situation and, you know, you have to just kind of pull back. But um, this is the thing with the cycle of abuse, and it's important to um, understand that... When people get hurt, unfortunately, they feel like they've lost something. And instead of being inspired by those that are put as a blessing into their world to know what kindness or love is, they um, want to hurt it because they're hurting. 
Um, but if we could just turn that around and be inspired by those that are trying to show you what care is um, and not try to tear them down, that'd be a good thing. Because that tends to be the issue with abuse. Um, once someone gets tapped into that, they have a hard time um, wanting to see something better. Because something tells them that they don't, that because they were hurt by that, they can't get there again. And I don't think that's true. I know that that's not true. So there's that. Um, the last thing that I just want to talk about real quick um, hopefully you'll understand what I'm talking about we blame the victim rather than holding the person that did the wrong accountable that is systematic I saw that when I was a kid with uh, young girls that I knew that got abused that um, everyone called them all kinds of terrible names rather than the people that hurt them. So if we could maybe change that uh, habit and focus more on the people that do the wrong rather than blaming the victim, that'd be kind of good. That'd be kind of nice. Lastly, um, no matter who you tune into, as far as your news goes or whatnot, um, I hope that you're noticing that a lot of really bad people have been getting arrested lately. <laughs> people that have been around for decades doing really bad stuff um, on a very high level, on a mass level, because they're instilling the drug trade. If you don't have pain, no one's going to buy the drugs. If you don't have pain, no one's going to force their kids or themselves into sex trafficking. If you don't have pain or suffering, you're not going to have vulnerable people that get pulled into really gnarly conversations in life. Hmm. So maybe this is the big change in the world. I really hope so. I've been hoping for this for a long time. And um, I want to leave it on a good note that um, things are changing, whether you want to notice it or not, that's okay. Um, I like to stay optimistic. I like to be honest and truthful about stuff, but optimistic. Um, and things are changing for the good. And uh, as long as we can keep tuning in to what is really good, um, that'd be nice. So... There you go. That's it. That's all I got to say tonight. Have a good night, guys. Bye.